If you're in store for a new handset, this is the latest LG G Pro 2 that you'll probably find in stores very, very soon. And you might be wondering, how does it fare against the top devices out there? Today, we compare it against one of our favorite smartphones, the Sony Xperia Z1. We'll take a look at which one is better. Now, the LG G Pro 2 is definitely the larger one. It features a 5.9 inch display while the Xperia Z1 has a 5 inch screen, but also both are extremely fast. Both feature Snapdragon 800 processor, both feature great cameras. So which one should you buy? We'll dive in in the minute details to help you make a better decision. So stick with us. We have two outstandingly well-built smartphones in the G Pro 2 and Xperia Z1, but also two starkly different designs. The G Pro 2 is made out of plastic with slight ergonomic curves and a subtle textured mesh pattern on the back. The Xperia Z1 on the Spart comes with a strict rectangular shape and a body made of glass that looks truly stunning, but those sharper edges make it a bit less ergonomic. There's also a big size difference between the two. The G Pro 2 is a phablet after all has a much larger 5.9 inch display and it plain won't fit in some pockets. The Xperia Z1 is big as well, but it does not push the limits so hard. At the same time, in its class of phablets, the G Pro 2 is actually surprisingly compact, sporting a record screen to phone size ratio, something that LG achieves by keeping screen bezel at the absolute minimum. It is also shockingly lightweight. In fact, the G Pro 2 weighs the same as the much smaller Xperia Z1. LG's phablet has all its physical keys, a volume rocker and a lock key on its back. It takes some getting used to, but once you remember not to reach out to the side to lock your phone, you'd be fine. The buttons are also clicky and easy to press, and you can also use them as camera shutter keys. Sony, on the other hand, uses traditional side-positioned keys with that signature stylish round lock key and a dedicated camera shutter key. Finally, Sony's phone has one important extra feature. It is water-resistant and can withstand continuous immersion in water beyond 3 feet deep, and it's also dustproof. Both phones come with 1080p displays, but the 5.9-inch one on the G Pro 2 is much larger than the 5-inch one on the Z1. Which one is better though? It's hard to say, as both have their pros and cons. The screen of the Xperia Z1 suffers from poor viewing angles, tilted just slightly and the screen starts to lose a lot of its color and vibrancy. The G Pro 2 has an IPS LCD screen with very good viewing angles and fine colors. Whites are a bit bluish, but for the most part, color accuracy is fine. The display on the Sony phone is also slightly brighter than the LG One, and overall the Xperia Z1 is slightly better for outdoor use. Being the newer device, the LG G Pro 2 also has a newer version of Android on board. It ships with Android KitKat, while at this moment the Sony Xperia Z1 has been updated to Android 4.3 and it's still waiting for the KitKat update. Now, LG uses its Optimus skin on top of Android, while Sony goes on to use its Timescape interface. LG's one comes with a rainbow of eye-popping colors, flashy animations and transitions, and a fun cartoony look. Sony's skin looks more mature, with more toned down colors, and while animations are also there, they're not that much in your face. In terms of features and apps, the LG G Pro 2 is just packed. LG has introduced quite a few optimizations for phablets in its interface, and our favorite one is the split-screen dual-window multitasking that allows you to run two apps simultaneously alongside. You simply long hold the back button to bring uh, the recently opened apps and you can drag apps from there. Right now there are 15 apps that support this new multitasking feature. The G Pro 2 also supports a new one-hand operation mode that can, sh that can shrink down your whole screen to a smaller size or just the keyboard to a smaller one. The handset also comes with a new security feature called Knock Code that allows you to set a security pattern consisting of 4 to 8 taps on a 2x2 square. You can then tap that pattern straight from the lock screen without having to wake up the phone to unlock it. Neatly, it works anywhere on the screen, but you have to get used to the second or so that it takes for the screen to wake up after you tap the code. 
Customization options are also rampant on the G Pro 2 with its support for custom themes and all sorts of tiny novel features. You have multi-photo wallpaper, the capability to resize icons and support for landscape orientation. Sony's handset does not have such fancy features, but on the flip side of things it is lighter on memory. Admittedly, Sony allows small apps like a calculator and a notepad to run on top of the main screen, but that's as far as multi-window multitasking gets. The G Pro 2 comes with an infrared sensor on top and you can use that as a remote for say a TV and to use that you actually have the Q Remote application that gets the job done without any bells and whistles. LG also bundles in its own voice assistant that it calls QVoice and you can use it in addition to Google Now. QVoice comes with the preference of having access to core applications so you can use it to say something like call dad or text my sister. But for all other voice functions like searching the web, we'd actually prefer using the quicker and more accurate Google Now. Both phones feature large enough displays so that the buttons in the on-screen keyboard are big and well-spaced and easy to type on on both. The LG keyboard has an additional row with the numbers and that's definitely a time saver, plus overall it feels just a little bit more comfortable and snappier. The G Pro 2 and Sony Xperia Z1 are both high-end devices that pack a lot of punch and they both stand up to a standard of smooth lag-free performance. Both run on the quad-core Snapdragon 800 SoC, a chip that can easily handle even heavier loads with ease. The slight hardware distinction between the two handsets lies in the fact that the G Pro 2 features 3GB of RAM while the Xperia Z1 has 2GB. The G Pro 2 also features double the internal storage. It's got 32GB on board, whereas the Z1 comes with 16GB on board. You can expand memory in both devices with micro SD cards of up to 64GB and that's good news. Say all you want about how inconvenient it is to carry around a phablet, but it's a liberating experience for web browsing. Desktop versions of websites look much better on the 5.9 inch LG G Pro 2 and that's a plus. Both LG's and Sony's devices come with the Chrome mobile browser preloaded and it gets the job done effortlessly, with a well optimized for touch interface, quick rendering of pages and lag free zooming and scrolling. In terms of connectivity, you have 4G LTE on both devices and all other basics are covered as well. The two handsets support dual channel Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, AGPS and NFC. And for connections to external monitors, the G Pro 2 relies on a slim port, while the Sony Xperia Z1 comes with an MHL port. That's something to keep in mind. The Sony Xperia Z1 comes with a 20 megapixel rear camera with a single LED flash, while the LG G Pro 2 sports a 13 megapixel shooter that also comes with optical image stabilization plus technology. Now it's worth mentioning that the Xperia Z1 actually has the largest image sensor of any Android smartphone. It's in fact 60% larger than the one on the G Pro 2. Now both camera apps open up quickly, but the actual interfaces are very different. Now, overall, LG supports various modes that you can manually pick from and things like manual focus that are just not available in the Sony camera app. And LG's interface also has a slightly better optimized looks. There are no long lists that you have to scroll and everything is within a tap or two. Both devices capture very good images that look sharp with an outstanding amount of detail and with vibrant colors. Now the images shot on the Xperia Z1 though are a little sharper, but at the same time the handset tends to capture slightly washed out, even a bit bluish colors that look less impressive in comparison to the livelier ones in the G Pro 2. The LG handset shoots with more accurate, still very slightly oversaturated, but still more accurate colors, good exposure and excellent dynamics. The G Pro 2 also introduces 4K video capture and it supports 1080p recording at 60 frames per second and the traditional 30 FPS recording. And that's a big advantage having so many options. LG has included a new OIS Plus system on its part that combines optical image stabilization with software stabilization. And you can definitely notice an improvement in the steadiness of the recorded footage. 
While the Xperia Z1 does not have those elaborate functions, it still has the basics covered with support for 1080p video recording at 30 frames per second. What's more, the Z1 camera has probably the fastest continuous autofocus in video of any smartphone. It's nearly instantaneous, while the one in the G Pro 2 can take a very long while, and sometimes the focus jumps back and for forth on it for no good reason. Fablets are changing the way we consume media, with their big screens acting like an invitation for consumers to watch more videos, more photos on the go, more YouTube videos, and the G Pro 2 with its spacious and vivid 5.9 inch display is no exception. Screen size alone gives it a definite edge over the Xperia Z1. Listening to music is also a more rewarding experience on the G Pro 2. LG's handset comes with a powerful 1 watt speaker on the back, and while it lacks a bit in depth, it's definitely a step above the quieter and generally less impressive speaker on the Xperia Z1. The G Pro 2 is a large device, but this large size does not translate well into loud sound in the earpiece, and in actuality calls in the earpiece sound a bit on the quiet side. Our callers also reported hearing our voice with a bit of distortion. Those are not huge issues, but we expect a bit better from a high-end device like the G Pro 2. The Xperia Z1 is not perfect either, but you'll at least hear your colors much louder and clearer, and the same can be said for the other end of the line. Our conversation partners on the Z1 reported easily recognizing that natural tonality in our voice. The battery endurance of the Z1 is not all that impressive though. The phone just sucks up that battery juice very quickly. In most cases, the handset would last you a full workday, but overnight charging is pretty much guaranteed. The G Pro 2 ranks much better, and you can rest assured it won't die midday. Plus, on less busy days, it could last up to two days, which is nice. So finally, the time has come to answer the one big question left. Which one should you buy? The LG G Pro 2 or the Sony Xperia Z1? Now, both look good and both are smooth performance, but we're extremely impressed with the LG G Pro 2 and especially with its nice 13 megapixel camera with the new optical image stabilization plus. So overall, it feels like a slightly more refined handset with more interface features and that gives it a slight edge. But the big reason for you to pick one over the other is convenience and you have to consider which one fits your lifestyle better. Now that's why, as you can see, there is a big size difference. The G Pro 2, as uh, compact as it is for its size, is still much larger and it doesn't fit well in many pockets. So if you care about performance, the two are almost on par. The G Pro 2 has a slight edge, but in terms of size and ergonomics, it, ergonomics it's up to you. So thanks for watching this review. Check out phonearena.com for more details. Thanks for watching.